see sales and money in itself is the oxygen of the business, but sales cures all. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? The most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. YouTube, what's up? Nicholas Bailey here. I'm dropping the best advice for entrepreneurs today. This is a question that I get often, like what is the best advice? If you go back in time and tell yourself something, what would you say? I'm hoping that this will collapse a decade into a day for you. So here we go with the three top things, my best advice for entrepreneurs. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Nicholas Bailey, as you can see from the channel, but I'm the actual guy. Go ahead and click that subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed. Also, there's a bell there. That bell will give you notifications when a new episode goes live so that you don't miss any of them. You don't want them to be backdated. You don't want to get distracted by the news popping up in your newsfeed, Facebook notifications, Instagram notifications, TikTok notifications, freaking whatever platform it is. You want to have the best stuff. And you have the ability to curate the content that you consume rather than content coming out and hitting you. So I want to make sure that we do that. So go ahead and hit that little bell if you want to see more videos like this. Now, as you're going through this video, you really like the video, it helps us a ton get this video out to more entrepreneurs out there that need that help, that need that advice and the best advice that they can get that will save them time, money, and years and one of the ways that you could do that is through expressing that you like the video by liking the video there's a thumbs up you can hit that thing i'll be able to see it it gives us tons of interaction and helps me bring the energy on all of these videos let's jump into it advice number one is knowing your no's before your yeses everything i'm talking about today is something that you can take away that's foundational and that could change everything for you right now as an entrepreneur one thing that consistently gets struggled with as an entrepreneur is something called shiny object syndrome. Even the most successful people in the world that I know that build million dollars, multi-million dollar companies, oftentimes the thing that keeps them from going to the eight figure, nine figure mark is the fact that they consistently get distracted with shiny object syndrome. There's more opportunity and more ideas and the more successful they get, the more opportunity, the more ideas, the more things that come across their desk that can distract them. One of the benefits that I had when I was first starting my business, I was 20, my wife was 18, we had just gotten married, and we didn't yet know what we did want out of life. And oftentimes as an entrepreneur, we don't really know what we do want out of life yet. We don't understand the business that we're gonna start. We don't know exactly where we're gonna be in 20 years. Yet one of the first things that I found out that helped me a ton that was kind of like car gurus. If you go on car gurus, you can search for your favorite car. You'd be like, all right, Audi, R8, 2017 or newer, this many miles, this location. All of a sudden, it'll filter out things and it'll show you the results that you want. Maybe you don't know that and you're like, man, I just don't want anything over 100,000 miles. I don't want anything over this price point. And then all of a sudden, it spits out all these cards, kind of like that. But when I first started, I was like, all right, I don't want to be away from my wife. So I was like, oh, having a job away from my wife then wouldn't really make any sense. So all of a sudden, I wasn't going to go do something that was already ultimate failure for me. Because the ultimate failure is going out there and having success with no fulfillment. You're having success in everyone's eyes, but you're not actually creating success for you. So I started looking at, I don't want to be away from my wife. I don't want to be stuck in one place all the time. I don't want an income gap. So I don't want like something where you can only earn a certain amount of money. So I started thinking about all these different things and it started helping me dwindle down some of the things that, that some of the answers that I maybe do want because now it was limiting all the different answers out there. What this is gonna help you do, it's gonna help you when the opportunities and new things come your way, you're gonna easily be able to know what to say no to because you'll ultimately know what you said yes to. It's really difficult to say no if you have not yet said yes. It's a common mistake of most entrepreneurs out there that don't watch videos like this. The next phase to take it a little bit deeper is you wanna figure out what's the type of impact or transformation that you wanna see in the world? Like what's the thing that drives you? And I always say go one step deeper with this. Imagine someone says, I wanna get families together. Like I wanna restore families. They might think, well, I need to be a family therapist or a family coach. Or what have you brought, like, brought in your spectrum and thought, what if I started a restaurant? Right, because a restaurant owner would ultimately get families together if they did it the right way. So you could take this one step further and think of creative ideas. How can you create that solution or create that transformation that you ultimately want? The next phase that I go through is I start thinking about things like, what am I good at? What do I have the capacity to become good at? Like, may not be that good at it, but I'm like, I know I could get good at this. What do I like to do? 
And ultimately from those different ciphers, these, these different filters that you put on a website, all of a sudden it'll spit out a few different answers for you. And for me, it was like, I don't want to be away from my wife. I, I know these things that I don't want. Great. Like I'm not going to take any opportunity that leads me down this path. The second thing is like, what's the transformation I want to create? I'm like, man, you know what? I want to be influential. I want to go out there and I want to make an impact in men. I'm like, all right, these are cool. Like I get that these are some of the things I want to go to. Now, what are all the different ways that I could think of that I could create that result? And inside of that, I'm going to write down, what am I good at? What do I like to do? What are my skill sets in? And, and from that place, all of a sudden now I can look at where do these things have overlap? Like where do I have overlap in this, in this ability to take the things that I'm really good at and the, the ideas and the, the ideas and the different types of business models and the different types of ways that I can get to the result that I want to create in my life. How can I take these things and see where they overlap so I could see which ones I can automatically X out? And what ones I'm left with. And for me, I was really left with only like a handful of options, which made shiny object syndrome not even a problem for me, which has allowed us to build this movement to reach millions of men every single year, thousands of men directly all the time through the fact that I have just not quit the very thing that I started in the first place. And the majority of entrepreneurs out there fail because they consistently get shiny object syndrome. They consistently are trying something new. If right now the business model you're in is working for other people, it can work for you as well. End of story. If other people are doing it, it can work for you. So stop shifting and start doing the thing that's right in front of you. Number two is focus on the skill sets, not just the opportunity. Both of these are really good. There's opportunities out there. People are always looking for what's the easiest, fastest way to have success. How can I make the most amount of money with the least amount of effort? That's awesome. Yet think about this for one second. If you just have opportunity with no skill sets, well then what happens, that's kind of like winning the lottery. You win the lottery, the person who wins the lottery has to go see a therapist before they can even collect the money now because it drives people insane. Why? Because they don't know how to produce money, but they got money and they don't know how to keep it and they don't know how to invest it. So now they've hit this level of success. Imagine if I gave you the most fit body in the world, but it was an out of shape person. The out of shape person, all they're going to do is be happy that they're fit for a few weeks and they're going to dwindle it back down to the same body that they had before. Except now they've tasted what it's like to have the fit body and now they feel out of control because they have no clue how to sustain the results that they have. Whereas if I were to just give them the fat body and give them five pound lost results, they'd feel empowered because now they know how to get results, they know how to keep the results and they know how to keep growing those results because they're doing it every single day. So what happens when there's no skill set? and there's a great opportunity, it's the same thing. It's like getting a billion dollars in your bank account and watching it dwindle away every single day, feeling like you have no control over it. Because at some point, that opportunity will go away and this person's met with no skill sets to be able to change their situation. The opposite side though, let's say we take a Warren Buffett or a Bill Gates or whatever one is less controversial for you out there, pick one of those, or the most successful person that you could think of, if I were to take everything away from them, their connections, take away all their money, all their businesses right now, do you believe they'd be successful again? The answer is yes. Why is the answer yes then? The answer is yes because of the skill sets that they've required and acquired over time to be able to go out there and run the businesses because the number one investment you can make is in between these two ears right here. It's not real estate. It's not the business plan. It's the education that you have and the skill sets they've created, not just education, knowing it, yet actually applying it. How many guys know out there that it's a lot different to know how to shoot a free throw than to shoot 10,000 free throws and become really good at it, right? It's like we need to have the knowledge on how to do it and we need to go out there and actually do it and you're going to want to do that as well to be able to go out there and create the skill set. Now, inside of skill sets, some of the first things to do when you're starting as an entrepreneur, number one skill set to focus on is sales and marketing. Sales and marketing. Sales and marketing. See, sales and money in itself is the oxygen of the business, but sales cures all. Meaning that if you go out there and create sales, you now can go out there and get that personal assistant. You can get the web designer. All these other things that you're not good at, but yet if a business owner and a businessman, an entrepreneur cannot master sales, cannot go out there and sell their own products, sell their vision, sell their idea, they will choke and die. As a human, if you do not breathe and create sales in a business as creating sales, money is the oxygen. In the real world, if you do not breathe and get oxygen, if you do not learn how to breathe, you will die. End of story. As a business owner, you will die without money. End of story. 
the number one skill set to focus on first is going out there being able to communicate the message and create sales, transactions for money with your product or service. Now, if someone out there is selling the product then and you're not, that means that you just do not know how to sell the product. End of story. They know how to sell the product, learn from them, figure out a way to shadow them, get the skill set of selling. It's the number one best friend that you will have. Number three. Figure out how to have your passions overlap with your responsibilities. We have two different courts, responsibilities. Me as a businessman, I remember when I failed my first business, I was cleaning carpets and I did it because I just figured out like, man, like I need to take care of my responsibilities. I'm failing my business, I need to go out there and provide for my wife. Yet what I found out is that I just felt so dead in the things that I was doing. I was covering my expenses, I was taking care of my responsibilities, yet I remember sitting there thinking, like I was so passionate about all these other things like golf and, and driving cars and motocross and I had so many passions out there. Then there, So let's go to the passion side. Maybe you have tons of passions as well. I had lots of passions. I thought why can't I just go out there and do my passion? And so I did. I tried golfing. I golfed for 15 months straight and I golfed every single day. And I realized like this is taking away from my responsibilities. I'm not taking care of my wife. I thought man it's like life always going to be this crappy. And the goal was to actually go out there and, and how do I have my responsibilities and my passions overlap? Meaning, when I even say that, you have these passions, what are the passions that you have that also overlap with the responsibilities that you have for your family, for your mission and vision? I was like, man, it's my responsibility to make this impact in these people. It's my responsibility to get this message out there. And I really love communicating on camera. So I'm gonna take the things that I do like not just go out there and clean carpets to barely get by. I'm going to go out there and create the business where I can create the transformation in the men that I want through communicating which is something that I love to do. So ask yourself right now, what are some of your passions? What are your responsibilities? Where is the overlap so that you can have longevity inside of your business because you've created a business where your passions and your responsibilities have gone out there and they've overlapped. And when I did this, that's where I was able to create the brotherhood. I was able to create my first health company. I was able to go out there and create our YouTube post-production company. All these companies were created by taking what wasn't just my passion, because I would have just gone out there and played golf, and not just my responsibilities, because I would have just stayed there and cleaned carpets. I took them and I created something where I was excited about it. Because if your competition's out there and they're good at what they do and they're excited about it, you're screwed. Unless you're out there, you're passionate about it. You're passionate about it. You're driven. You want to go out there and you want to slay it every single day. It's something that you have capacity to become great at. And when we have these passions and responsibilities overlap, that's where we can create that X factor where you can go out there and really live in your genius like a Tiger Woods, um, like a Warren Buffett. Enter your favorite sports person here that's just had that talent, yet it was also coupled by it transformed their entire family tree, a Conor McGregor. Right, he's a fighter, that was his passion. I'm sure he had other passions out there. Maybe he loves soccer, I know that. Like he went out there and he did the fighting and then all of a sudden it provides for the rest of his family's life. Uh, I actually posted on Instagram something phenomenal about him talking about losing his mind and how it'll all be worth losing his mind if he creates these results and he went out there and did it and you can do it as well. That concludes this video of the best advice for entrepreneurs, again, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and I know you've already subscribed. You've already rang the bell. If you had a takeaway from this, let me know down in the comments. I'll make sure to engage back as well. I appreciate you for that. I'm excited to see you on the next video yet. If you have not joined us inside of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group, head over there, connect with over 5,400 other businessmen like you and I that are living this three-dimensional lifestyle, prospering health, wealth, and relationships. And what you'll see is the rising tides of all of them raises all ships. You will see a difference just from being in the group. Join the Billion Dollar Brotherhood on Facebook and I will see you on the next video.